the time period of revolution of the planet the square of time period of revolution of planet is proportional to cube root of semi major axis the square of time period of planet is proportional to cube root of semi major axis of orbit okay how do how do we can justify this statement here so again again let me take the elliptical orbit cube cube of okay cube root uh, usually cube of semi major axis okay fine yeah and uh, now uh, let's uh, take help of th this only four point and near point uh, mass of planet sun is here let me take this is r2 this is r1 there's a v1 Uh, what are the uh, just now we have concluded no uh, like can we conserve angular momentum okay i think i, I have okay this one I'll, i'll proceed like this so we can conserve angular momentum so from conservation of angular momentum v2 r2 what is r1 r1 should be equal to a into a minus a a plus a uh, what do you mean by all this this is a and this distance th this distance will be a you know so therefore what can be r1 r1 should be equal to th this is sun so what should be the r1 so this r1 this r2 so just now previous problems i just gave that all the information so i'm taking help of that one so from here if i substituting this what i'll get v1 is equal to a into 1 minus c v2 equal to a into 1 plus c then applying the conservation of mechanical energy formula minus g m s m p r1 plus m p v1 square applying conservation of mechanical energy uh, what are unknown things v1 v2 are unknown solving equation 192 i'll get expression for v1 and v2 i'll directly write it later on if you want you can cross check it huh? so what is the expression for v1 v1 will become g into mass of sun by semi major axis 1 plus c by 1 minus c this expression for the speed of planet at near point solving 192 uh, what is the aerial velocity of a planet how do we define da by dt this should be equal to angular momentum by two times of mass of planet what is the angular momentum let me write here mass of planet v1 r1 by two times of mp so this will be v1 r1 by 2 what is v1 v1 from here g m s a 1 plus e minus 1 by e Equal to one by two. What is R one? R one R one. Shall I write a into one minus c? By two is it? So this is the aerial velocity. Okay, solving this. So what is the expression for aerial velocity? D a by d t. This should become equal to half into. G M S A one minus E square. Okay, let's come for the time period of revolution. What do you mean by time period of revolution? How much of time? 
how much of time the planet will take to go around once I means it, it will start from here how much of time it will take to go around once as a periodic motion so therefore i am interested in time period here. so this time period of revolution we can find out here now t is equal to area of ellipse by aerial velocity area of velips how much pi ab <coughs> area of velips pi ab and what is aerial velocity just now we have calculated substituting this gms okay if you solve all this that to everything if you adjust that to everything will adjust uh pi will be there as it is no and uh, this a, a a a what we can write it as a a b no Uh, expression for b is needed no so how to replace b i think uh, some initial i wrote some equation no let me bring that one here we'll take this one somewhere here copy where it gone not visible huh? okay I'll, i'll write down no problem it is so this will be a square is equal to a e square plus b square no so in b what to b you can replace so this will become a square 1 minus e square b square b what you can write root of a into 1 minus e square so substituting all that b uh, this particular thing solving will end up with equation 2 pi a cube by g m s so what kepler is said square of time period is proportional to cube of semi major axis that's what i shown proof here this one so this only proof not there not nobody will ask you show the proof since uh, uh, it was book in the directly given no so how it has come again with all the things what we know the physics condition of angle and condition of mechanical energy and relativity about the ellipse idea is what we ended up this one here so i suggest you just uh, have an idea that's all now we are to use in the numericals here so already we know enough of thing so what is the only thing which will help you here conservation of angle and conservation of mechanical energy okay this is about the kepler's law okay let's focus some like any conditions means any conditions means like uh, regarding the force nature of force re regarding the nature of force so any condition means <coughs> under what circumstances kepler's law are valid or not valid so first we'll go for a central force what do you mean by a central force i think it's several points it has come so what is the central force like a best example is gravitational force coulomb's force spring force they are all central forces here so it's a force that is directed along a 
and fixed point is the force that is acted along the line joining the object and the fixed point here i think gravitational force is nothing but central force no coulomb force even the spring force so there is a one basic idea of a central force here now what is a conservative force we have other what is a conservative force work done by conservative force in close path will be zero net work done by conservative force now the gravitational force what we have so this much only don't go beyond this because again uh, we have to go to the some vector notations so i suggest you just have a idea of central force here example is gravitational force <coughs> gravitational coulomb's force yeah, spring force these are all central forces here uh, kepler's first time third law no, for first second law there kepler's second law second law is independent of independent of nature of force nature of force and it depends only on whether the force is a central or not that's all he's telling so it's not bother like a f is proportional to r square <coughs> obey should obey inverse coil or nothing to do whether force is central if force is central then only torque will be zero no are you getting so if the force acts the gravitational force between the planet and sun if it acts along line joining the sun and planet then only that force will intersect axis of rotation then torque will be zero so this is one basic necessity for the second law it is irrespective of whether how f varies with the distance but as the first and third law first and third law what happen are valid only one force obeys inverse square law so i think uh, the mathematics what i shown that is what i i'm just concluding here so when i derived the second law did i bother about the force nothing came no but when i when i'm talking about the first and third law what what did what did i applied i applied what conservation of mechanical energy what is the conservation of mechanical energy the potential just come why the potential is like this only because the gravitational force obeys inverse coil law finish the what i did now that only i'm concluding here please these are not big things the mathematics what i have no if you make keen observation of that mathematics this is the conclusion i'm not bother like a how f proportional to r proportional to 1 by r proportional to 1 by r square irrespective of that second law force is central or not only that will determine the other things next again uh, second law one more condition for second law what is second law the plane of the orbit means all points on elliptical orbit should lie in a plane and then only torque will be zero second law is independent of nature of force it depends on whether so next again second law so what is again one more condition we have to put it second law is valid only when all points orbit must lie in a same plane Uh, what, what do you mean by the same plane? It cannot shift a plane. If if it shift plane, then torque will become non-zero. Torque is non-zero, then angular momentum will not be conserved. That, that's the very simplest ideas. Means uh, what is the meaning, sir? We are not understanding that second law. All points should be that one. If this is the orbit, so you cannot take orbit like this. No? Look at the, the, these points. They lie in one plane. this point lie in plane so it's not possible huh? or sometimes 
it can be like this so look at this these points they they're in different plane no so it should not be that all points on orbit must lie in a same plane that's what the is putting a conditions here okay so therefore i think you have to be careful enough like uh, what is that particular force here okay now i'll i'll shift it to numericals nothing to do with uh, what all we studied uh, you can see the way numericals i do it no just sir, only uh, yeah so can you one scroll up completed take the question um, before that uh, one more no if I... we'll finish off all the total ideas huh? it'll be easy for you uh, now if a satellite is revolving in a circular orbit i'll increase and decrease the speed when i increase and decrease the speed what will happen to the orbits i need a planet huh? i need earth There's a Earth, this one, and a satellite is revolving in a circular orbit. 